God. Our scripture for today will be coming from Psalm 51 and 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, block out my transgressions. Amen. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come to you right now, God, as humble as we know how, Lord. First of all, we want to tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for last night. Yes, thank you for seeing us through the Thanksgiving holiday, Lord God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Lord God, we just want to give you the glory and all the praise, Lord. We want to ask you to forgive us for all our sins and all our shortcomings, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I know that you're in the midst on today because you said where there are two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst, Lord. Lord, I'm asking just the anoint, Lord God, set free and deliver, Lord. If somebody needs some joy today, God, we ask just to give us some joy, Lord. Anoint this service, Lord God. Anoint the man of God as he brings forth the word. Anoint the choir, God, to sing under the anointing, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, we just want to thank you and we want to praise you, God. Lord, we ask you just to bless the sick and the shut in on today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, just go by and just touch them, God. Just let them know that you are God in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we give you this service, Lord, for you to have your way. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. We would like to welcome you to BAM TTC, where the word of God is preached. And the love of God is on display, and the name of Jesus is shown up glorified. Amen. And I would like to say happy birthday to everybody born in the month of November. We have Betty Drone Matt Hill, November the 1st, Kelsey Jones, November the 4th, Ariana Whitehead, November the 4th, Serenity Cartwright, November the 11th, Taja Pettaway. November the 12th, Tamika Miller, November the 13th, Yolanda Grant, November the 24th, Sally Chance, November the 27th, and Derek Black, November the 27th. Amen. I'd like to say happy birthday. And in your way of giving to Born Again Ministry, you can do it by cash app, dollar sign, B-A-M-T-T-C 2020. Or you can uh, mail it in to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 1557, Tomboro, North Carolina, 27886. Or you can bring it to the church. Amen. Amen. And we're going to ask the choir to give us a song at this time. And the next voice you will hear will be Pastor Kenneth R. Drum.
worthy. Yes. Worthy. Yes, sir. He is worthy to be praised. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless him. Bless him. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that God is a good God? That he is a mighty good God. That he is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You're not an evil one day. I wonder if he's been good to you.
what is good in his name. Which is sincere worship and honest praise. Thank God we God. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say thank you, Jesus. Let the church shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give it unto God, my heavenly Father, my Lord, save Jesus Christ unto the Holy Ghost, who is my confidence and days and times like these. Truly, I honor my lovely wife, whom I love dearly, my loving mother, whom I love dearly, all of our great and outstanding ministers, deacon, deaconess, mothers, and everybody in the house on today. It is good to be here in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I count it a privilege to be in the number one more time. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Truly, it's a blessing, amen, to see and not just be seen. Thank God, dear God. Amen. To God be the glory. And I believe that everything that hath breath ought not mind praising the Lord. Thank God, dear God. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Truly, we honor everybody in the house on today. We thank God for our guests who have come to fellowship with us this morning. We appreciate you so much. Thank God for you. Amen. We hope that you enjoy yourself in this service on today. And we'll come back again real soon. Amen. Amen. To God be the Lord. We're not going to prolong the time. We thank God for this wonderful choir, these great outstanding musicians of ours, for bringing the service that they bring. Amen. Glad to have my oldest child in the house on the day, Minister Regina Grove. With my grandson Josh, amen. All the way from Fairfax, Virginia. Amen. We thank God for them, amen. And we appreciate their presence on the day. Amen. So we're going to the Word of God. It is the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter 15. Matthew chapter number 15. Amen. And I must say it's always a pleasure to see the distinguished Deacon J.C. Lane in the house. Amen. Yeah. Amen. For all that he's going through. Amen. Yeah. I thank God for every time when I see him. Yeah. Amen. I count it a blessing. Amen. And an honor to have him in our presence yeah. on the day. Amen. Yeah. To God be the glory. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. We're in a familiar passage from last week, Matthew chapter 6, chapter 15. Today we want to look at verses 7 through 9. Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 through 9. If you got it, say amen. amen. Now let us all read together and it reads, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let's read that one more time. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Amen. I thank God for the reading of his holy word. Amen. And we will use for a subject on today, the same as last week, if your heart isn't in it. But this is the part two. If your heart isn't in it. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, my heavenly Father, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Dear Lord, I come before you, Lord, as humble as I know how. Designed for you to come on in the midst. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to your servant today. Please forgive me for all my sins and shortcomings. Please send forth your anointing to destroy every yoke that would oppose your word or your servant on today. And let your word go forth free under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the power. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May we see you. Thank you so much.
in the construction of this sermon series. Uh, part one last week, I want to say we poured the foundation. On today, part two, I hope to put up the framework. Practically next week, part three, we hope to close it in and complete the project. Is that all right? Amen. One more time, if you will, turn to your neighbor today. Amen. Old lady, Amen. we're here to talk about to talk. if your heart is an end. Part two. Part Let's give a little hand clap praise now. Uh, we discussed and learned on last week that the heart, spiritually speaking, is the central station and true essence of a human being, which can be understood as the seat and table of our emotions, affections, and intellect, as well as our will which governs and guides our acts or actions in this life. Am I right about that? These are all functions of the mind, but are connected to the heart in biblical language. Ladies and gentlemen, closely related to the mind are the acts of the will. Uh, acts resulting from a conscious or even a deliberate decision. For the conscious decision is made and will always be made in the heart. Ain't God a good God? Connected to the will. Uh -huh. Our human wishes and desires. Uh -huh. Not only is the heart associated with the activities of the mind and will, but it is also connected to the feelings, amen, and affections of a person. Amen. Y'all walk with me for a little while. Emotions such as joy originate in the heart. Other emotions are ascribed to the heart, and especially in the Old Testament. Uh, 1 Samuel 25, 37 lets us know that Nabal's fear is described by the phrase, his heart died within him. Hey, God, good God. Discouragement or despair, amen, uh, it, is, uh, 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 it is described by the phrase heaviness in the heart, which makes it stoop. <laughs> That's rough when heaviness in the heart makes your heart stoop. Hey, God, we God. Amen, hallelujah. Uh -huh. And another emotion connected with the heart is called sorrow. Somebody shout sorrow. Have you ever had sorrow to come into your life? Amen. Then you can relate to the scripture. John 16, 6 says, uh, Because I have spoken these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Sometimes what people say to you can cause sorrow to fill your heart. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. Proverbs 25, 20 describes sorrow as having a troubled heart. And we all know that John 14, 1 says in the words of Jesus, let not your heart be troubled. In God, in God. Uh -huh. The heart, ladies and, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, is also the seat of the affection of love and its opposite called hate. Uh -huh. Israel is commanded in scripture, but you shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason with your neighbor lest you bear sin because of him. Uh -huh. A similar attitude, ladies and gentlemen, is bitter jealousy. I wonder how many, how many of you have ever heard of jealousy. Amen. That is a human emotion. Amen. But it is Amen. It is a, an emotion that we ought to try and stay away from. Because nobody in this life has to be jealous over anybody about anything. Am I right about it? Because I believe that because God is God and because He is a just God, amen, and I believe that every good 
gift, the way the perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no value, there's neither shadow of turning. That what God has for you is for you, and what He has for me is for me, and there is no need for bitter jealousy. Is that right? But yet, James said that this jealousy is uh, described as coming from the heart. Uh -huh, but now, on the other hand, love. Somebody shout love. I'm uh -huh, shout love. Uh -huh, love is a many splendid thing. Ain't God with God. Uh -huh, but, but love is also a matter or emotion of the heart. Amen. And it, it is based also in the heart. And believers, we are commanded to love God with all our hearts. Uh -huh. And then we are commanded to love our neighbors as our own selves. Thank God to God. Now Paul taught that the purpose of God's command is to love that uh, love that comes from a pure heart. Amen. Uh, as we examine the contents of our hearts today, uh, can, can you assess your own heart as a pure heart? Can you? You want to, don't you? Can you assess your heart as a pure heart? When, in fact, in the you may be right now, where is it? Holding a word. Think about 
by sin. When you're no longer convicted by wrong impulses. When you're no longer convicted by doing somebody wrong. Huh? Amen. If you're no longer convicted by bad behavior, if you're no longer convicted by going along with everything that the world is doing without a second thought. You have a plan. Because the Bible says the Lord is not the world.
But uh, all moral conditions, from the highest to the lowest, are said to center in the heart. Sometimes the heart is used to represent a person's true character. Am I right about and that's why the Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's right. That's right. Where you spend your, your money is where your heart is. Where you spend your time is where your heart is. All right. How you spend your energy is where your heart is. All right. Huh? Am I right about it? This true nature is contrasted with the outward appearance. For man looking on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Yes, sir. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the heart is a complicated mystery. Uh -huh. with, uh, with many multifaceted functions, if you will. Right. And that's why. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10 say the heart is deceitful. Even our own hearts are deceitful. Above all things. And desperately wicked. And he asked the question, who can know it? In other words, who can understand your heart? One day in your heart, you feel like a nut. The next day, you don't. Am I right about it? Your heart can take you on a journey farther than you want to go. And sometimes your heart will refuse to let you go as far as you need to go. Who can understand? But the Lord says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, which means I look at your mind, which is the essence of who you are. Amen. To give every man according to his ways. And according to the fruit of his doing, which brings us to our text today. Ladies and gentlemen, in our text, we're back in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at verse 7. These words of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the scribes and Pharisees which were at Jerusalem. Verse 7 says, Ye hypocrites, where did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, Wait a minute, what is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is an imitator. All right. An imitator imitates. Uh -huh. Huh? But it's not the real thing. A hypocrite, an imitator, portrays an image, but it's not the image. Say so. Am I right about it? A hypocrite puts on a show for a captive audience. Uh -huh. Am I right about it? But if known to be an actor and not the real character themselves. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. A hypocrite is somebody that could be authentic but chooses to be otherwise than they really are. To try to impress somebody. Well, well, All right, about it? A hypocrite could just stay put and stay in tone and stay intact. But they insist on stepping out to try to show you that they are somebody who they are not. Jesus. All right, about A hypocrite. Is somebody that will already be off, off balance. Because sometimes if they're not careful, they forget what audience they are around and they slip into the real themselves. Uh, Y'all don't want to talk about a hypocrite today. 
He calls them, right? He sees them. All right. All right, about Amen. We feel safe because we haven't heard him call us one. Am I right about it? But he knows Amen. who we are. Amen. He knows where we are. And he knows what we are. Am I right about it? Hmm? The eye of man can perceive open profaneness. Hmm? But it's only the eye of the Lord that can discern hypocrisy. You can put on a show so good that you fool with everybody in there. Some people, some people are good actors, good imitators, good impersonators. They're good. <laughs> Amen. But you can fool so many people. Summertime. Now all the people you can fool sometimes. But you can't fool the Lord. No time. Am I right about it? So true. He knows hypocrisy. Because he don't look at just what you do and just what you say. But he examines the motive and the condition of our hearts. And he knows if your heart is in it. Am I right about it? And it is, and as it, and as it is a sin which his eye discovers, so is a sin among all things that his soul hates. The Lord hates sin. So therefore Jesus uh, references Isaiah 29, 13. For his reproof of these would be distinguished gentlemen. Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm going to close on this. Isaiah spoke it of the men of his generation. The one that he prophesied to. But yet Jesus applies the same prophecy to these scribes and Pharisees. Huh? Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes past prophecies can be used for present day actions. Hmm? I said, prophesy not of them only, but of all other hypocrites. And the prophecies of Scripture are being fulfilled every day as long as we live and as long as we're here on this earth. Am I right about it? The Lord knows if your heart is in it. So I came to provoke an attitude today. I told you I'm just laying the framework. And I hope to close it out next week. But I want everybody in BAM today and everybody that's listening to me to make up their mind to stop just going through the motions. Hmm? We come to church because that's our duty. And that's our pattern. And that's our lifestyle. Amen. But what do we do the whole rest of the week while we're not in the church? This here is where our heart really is. Anybody can squeeze an hour on Sunday to come to church and pretend To be in Christ. But all week long, don't have any private or meaningful devotion with the Lord. In any meaningful way. And what about study of the scripture during the week? Does the Bible say to study to show thyself approved unto God? Becoming a woman that needed not to be ashamed. What do you mean by that? If you are somebody that you got your nose everywhere else except for in the Bible, <laughs> 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 you 
You spend all the quality time on other things. But don't take time to study, not just read. He didn't just say, read to show yourself a proof. Am I right about it? He said, study. That's right. That's more in depth than read. Anybody can read. But he said, study to show thyself a proof under God. What kind of quality time do we spend studying the Word? And that's why when testing time comes, uh, I'm, I'm about through y'all, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just laying, laying this down. That's why when testing time comes, and we're being tested, tempted, and tried, we fail because we ain't got no words. And when you have a word in it, you can stand up like Jesus told us, say that it is written. But if you don't study to find out or to see what is written, how can you use it as the sword of the Spirit? Preacher, Pastor. Preacher. Am I right about it? We are saints. And it ought to show up in our attitude. It ought to show up in our gratitude. It ought to show up in our conversation. It ought to show up in our lifestyle. It ought to show up in our walk and in our talk. It ought to show up when we show up that we are children of the living God. That when we come forth and when we stand in anybody's presence, somebody ought to say, they're even a child of God. But when we look like, act like, and think like the world, they can say that. Ladies and gentlemen, if your heart isn't in it, it's time for you to take an honest assessment of your heart. Amen. An honest assessment. Because man is going to give you a pass. Because they ain't got nowhere to put you. But the Lord knows all of our hearts. He knows what's in it. He knows the motives that we have. He knows the ulterior moments. Yeah. Amen. We got to get real about being serious about serving and as the scripture would say, worshiping the Lord. Okay. And this is, this is not just a Sunday thing. No. This is an everyday thing. Yeah. This is an all day thing. Yeah. This is an all week thing. Yeah. All month and all year. Am I right about it? So don't think that we can keep setting aside this one hour a week to say I did my duty and ain't doing nothing else meaningful in the presence of God during the week. Let me tell y'all something. If you got friends or so-called friends and they don't rehearse this in your hearing, Come on. you better examine that friendship. Yeah. Or you need to surround yourself with friends that will tell you the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Lord God has been preached on today. The framework has been laid, and I hope we close it out next week. Amen. If your heart isn't in it. Amen. This is a message of self-examination. It's taking on the, uh, the identity of a series with a part three coming. And I hope that's the, the last part. Amen. But we've got to get our hearts right, Saint. Yes, Have you ever not heard the scripture, the Lord is coming back for the pure in heart? That's right. Hmm? Only the pure in heart shall see him. That's right. We can't just, we can't just, you know, sham our hearts. This is important. 
We got to change from the inside. Then it'll show up on the outside. Am I right about it? It's an inside job that we need. Where do I have to preach today is that anybody in this place, man, woman, boy, or girl, who wants to give his or her life to Jesus, now is your time. Today is your day. Now is the accepted time. I know y'all don't know this, but this song been ringing in my spirit. I just want to sing just a little bit of it. I might not even have all the words right. I might, even, might not even have the key right. Sometimes it seems life's so tough. No love and understanding. The road gets so rough. You may be feeling deep inside like giving up. But you got to hang on in there. Keep looking up. Somebody's watching you. Somebody knows you're going through. You got to keep the faith. A miracle is just one step away. Keep looking up. Don't look back. Full speed ahead. The prayer is at all. Keep looking up. Turn around, keep a smile on your face, and show them all around. It's so hard just to pay the bills. Pressure's all around you, take more than you can give. The master is the answer for the problems of this world. Just keep on looking up, and show them all around. Somebody watching you. Church, 
located at 4779 NC Highway 33 Northwest in Tarboro, North Carolina, where the word of God is preached, the love of God is on display, and the name of Jesus is glorified. Amen. We thank you so much for your time, your attention, your attendance. Have a beautiful and wonderful rest of the day. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.